Lesson 7.2 is other inverse trigonometric functions. So we're gonna build on what we talked about in 7.1 and keep talking about these inverse trig functions. So this first slide is just a little bit of a reminder of the six inverse trig functions, their domains and ranges, and their inputs and outputs. So remember for inverse trig, your input is whatever ratio you're looking at, and your output is your angle measurement. For the domains of the trig functions, it's the range of whatever the original trig functions were. And then the ranges are based on how we limited the original trig function to make it one-to-one. -one. Our little mnemonic to remember is sideways L, so if they live inside sideways L, if they're more cosine-based, cosine inverse, secant inverse, and cotangent inverse, they will give you output angle measurements in quadrants one and two, or between zero and pi. If they live outside sideways L, so they're more sine-based, sine inverse, cosecant inverse, and tangent inverse, then they will give you output angle measurements in quadrants one and four between negative pi over two and pi over two. The angles in quadrant four we always label as the small negative angles. These three problems are very similar to the ones that we did in 7.1, except for now they are cosecant, cotangent, and secant inverse problems. So go ahead and pause the video and evaluate these. For the first one, cosecant inverse of two means that the cosecant of theta equals two in quadrants one or four. Cosecant is r over y, so if we're on the unit circle, r would be one, which means y would be one half. So what angle would give us a y coordinate of one half in quadrants one and four? Pi over six. For the next one, cotangent inverse of negative root three, that means that cotangent of theta equals negative root three in quadrants one or two. Cotangent is x over y, so that would be negative root three over two over one half and so therefore that would be five pi over six. And then for the last one, secant inverse equals two root three over three, means where in quadrants one or two does secant equal two root three over three? Well, if I unrationalize that, I get two over root three, which is the same thing as one over root three over two, because secant is r over x, and r is one on the unit circle, so therefore where is our x coordinate root three over two? At pi over six. So these ones in tangent are a little bit more tricky because you have to actually work backwards and unsimplify. What is it going to look like when I take it out of the unit circle? Here we have some composite inverse trig functions with regular trig functions, um, but you'll notice on some of these they're not the same trig function. So we have the cosine inverse of the sine. So those ones will never cancel. So on all of these we have to work inside out. So go ahead and pause the video and evaluate these. For the first one, the sine inverse of the sine of 5 pi over 4, even though they're both sine, they don't cancel because 5 pi over 4 is outside of the range of sine inverse, which is in quadrants 1 and 4, and 5 pi over 4 is in quadrant 3. So you have to evaluate from the inside out. I know my final answer is going to be an angle measurement because sine inverse is on the outside. So I took the sine of 5 pi over 4 and I got negative root 2 over 2, and then now it's saying the sine of what angle equals negative root 2 over 2 in quadrants 1 or 4? So that would be in the fourth quadrant, and since it's in the fourth quadrant, we label it as the small negative angle, so we get negative pi over 4. For the next one, we have the cosine inverse of the sine of 7 pi over 6. So these aren't the same trig function, so they're not going to cancel. I know my final answer is going to be an angle measurement because I have inverse trig on the outside. So I have the sine of 7 pi over 6, which I evaluate to be negative 1 half. And then I'm going to take the cosine inverse of that. So where does cosine equal negative 1 half in quadrants 1 and 2? I end up in the second quadrant because it's negative, and I get 2 pi over 3. For the last one, I have tangent of the cosine inverse of root 3 over 2. Again, different trig functions, so they're going, not going to cancel. Regular trig is on the outside, so my final answer is going to be a ratio. So I evaluate the inside, where does cosine equal root 3 over 2 in quadrants 1 or 2, and that's going to be pi over 6. And then tangent of pi over 6, tangent is x over, r, y over x, and so I get 1 half over root 3 over 2, which is 1 over root 3 or root 3 over 3. Here we have some more composites. For all of these, regular trig is on the outside, which means my final answer is going to be a ratio. But these aren't on the unit circle, so we're going to have to do it in a little bit different way. Because they're different trig functions, they won't just cancel. So if I look at the first one, it says the cosine of the sine inverse of negative one-third. So for the inside part, I have the sine inverse of negative one-third, which is the, same, the sine of some angle theta is equal to negative one-third in quadrants one or four. Because this is not unit circle, I don't know what the angle measurement is. And since we're then going to take the cosine of that angle, we don't actually care. 
but what we're looking for is some angle that will give us this ratio for y over r, and then we want to know what its x over r ratio. So this is very similar to chapter 6, where I would give you something like this, where it would say sine is equal to negative one-third, it would give you a specific quadrant, and then it would ask you for a different trig function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a triangle in the correct quadrant, and then evaluate the outside trig function. Because this is negative, I know this is going to have to be in the fourth quadrant, so I'm going to draw my triangle y over r is negative one-third in the fourth quadrant. So I drew my triangle in the fourth quadrant because it was negative, and I know y is negative one, r is three, and then I need to find x using Pythagorean theorem. And so I did Pythagorean theorem and I found x to be two root two. So now the outside question is saying, okay, so what's the cosine of whatever this angle measurement is? Well, cosine is x over r, so therefore cosine would be two root two over three. So when they're not on the unit circle, the inside part is giving you enough information to draw a triangle, and then you can use that and Pythagorean theorem to evaluate the outside part. So go ahead and pause the video and try the second two. For number two, it says the sine of the tangent inverse of one half. So the inside part, the tangent inverse of one half, is saying the tangent of some angle equals one half, which is y over x in quadrants one and four. And then the outside question is saying, okay, so what's the sine of that angle? So I drew my triangle in quadrant one because it's a positive tangent. Y is one, X is two, Pythagorean theorem, R would be the square root of five. So then sine is Y over R, so I get one over the square root of five or square root five over five. For number three, it says the tangent of the cosine inverse of negative three over four. So the inside question is saying the cosine of theta is equal to negative three over four in quadrants one and two. And then the outside question is saying, okay, so what's the tangent of that angle? Since it's negative cosine, I drew it in quadrant two and cosine is X over R. Pythagorean theorem, I get y to be the square root of seven. Be careful, this is a fake three, four, five right triangle. And tangent is y over, r, y over x, and so you end up with the square root of seven over negative three. So this has been more inverse trig functions. Whenever you have composites where they're not the same trig function, you always have to evaluate from inside out. On ones that are not unit circles, where you have a regular trig function on the outside, drawing a triangle very similar to the questions that we did in chapter six. Our calculators only have sine, cosine, and tangent buttons, which means they only have sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse buttons. So in order to evaluate secant, cotangent, or cosecant inverse problems, we need to be a little bit more creative. So none of these are on the unit circle, which means we would not be able to use the unit circle to evaluate these, so we're gonna have to use a calculator. So for secant inverse of three, that's saying the secant of what angle equals three in quadrants one or two. We want to relate this to something that our graphing calculator or our scientific calculator does have, which would be sine, cosine, or tangent. And I know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if secant is equal to three, that means that the cosine of whatever this angle is, is equal to one third. So then I can use that to help us evaluate the original question, because now if I change this back into inverse trig, this is saying that the angle is equal to the cosine inverse of one third. So I can evaluate the secant inverse of three by evaluating the cosine inverse of one third on my calculator. If I plug my calculator in in radian mode, I end up with 1.230. So go ahead and pause the video and try the second two, cotangent inverse of one half and the cosecant inverse of negative four. So cotangent inverse of one half means that cotangent of some angle theta equals one half which means tangent of that angle equals two, so I can evaluate this as the tangent inverse of two, which is 1.107 in radians. And then for the last one, the cosecant inverse of negative four means the cosecant of some angle is negative four, which means the sine of that angle is negative one-fourth, which means I can evaluate this as the sine inverse of negative one-fourth, which is negative 0.252 in radians. So this has been more inverse trig.